Hey YouTube, it's Dimitri, and today we're going to cover our final testing procedure, for the most part, um, for time series. This is going to be essentially the final test, as I'm going to call it here. Uh, today we're going to cover white noise testing. Um, let's just talk about white noise a little bit, what it is, uh, give you a few examples, explain how to test for these different aspects, and then we'll just wrap up the video. So before I get going too much, I'm going to mention this will be all the testing. This is a lot of the theory that we're going to kind of see and do, and you'll read all these testing in different books. So you can talk about white noise, which is this video. Uh, we did on ACF and PACF testing in previous videos, and we've also done stationarity testing. We're going to continue to use this. Um, this is all the textbook stuff. After we get all this done here and wrapped up with this video, uh, I'm going to start pulling data, try to find some data. We'll do some real world examples uh, and kind of show you the intricacies of fitting time series models and also how you get a lot of logic and theory from the time series modeling. And that's what makes it, I think, exciting and more, I think, I don't know, robust or more entertaining to do is that time series has a lot of meaning and value baked into it. And trying to untangle all that meaning is kind of the fun process. So let's just dive on in. Okay, so today's book that I'm using here is going to be Statistical Analysis of Financial Data in S+. It's by Renee Carmona. Um, if you want to get the book, I'll put a link below. The, the link's going to be actually to R. So this is going to be the same book. But it's Statistical Analysis of Financial Data in R. S+, plus is the predecessor to R. Um, anyways, but when you start looking through this here on page 264, um, it's going to talk about a finite sequence W... Uh, is basically white noise. Um, they have to be IID and they have to be stationary. So as we talked about in previous videos, um, the stationarity component is going to be uh, a constant mean and a constant variance. And specifically here for white noise testing, white noise is going to be the measure of your residuals of your model. So the errors from the model need to have a mean of zero in this case. And then they also have a constant variance. And they also have to be IID, and there can be no serial correlation in the residuals. So let's just write this out. Okay, so today we are going to be doing uh, white noise testing, as I mentioned. Um, white noise is going to be in relation to um, the model errors. We'll also call these uh, the residuals. And we're going to have some model, so it can be any type of model, but essentially you'll have like y of t is going to be equal to, uh, let's just say like alpha plus beta 1 x1, um, let's say plus beta 2 x2 plus, and let's say, I don't know, there's some sort of autoregressive term here. So we'll say rho of 1 um, times y of t minus 1, so it's an autoregressive term. And you can add some other stuff in here, but any model you do is going to have some error at the end, error of t. Um, so again, you can write some other simpler models such that, I don't know, it's just a linear regression or an OLS plus, you know, dot, 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 beta n, x of n. And you have your errors here at the end. So either case here, we're going to have some errors in our time series model right at the end. And we're going to test these for the condition of white noise. And to have white noise, as I mentioned here, um, your mean of uh, your errors, these need to be equal to zero. Um, the variance here of your error terms, these need to be constant. And finally, um, we're going to say no serial correlation. So this is going to be the third condition here. So you have one, two, three. Okay, and this no serial correlation component um, is also going to require that they are IID. So they need to be independent and identically distributed. Uh, these are just the conditions of it, and we can test them in a variety of ways. Um, an obvious test here, so you'd run here, you could run an ADF. So this is going to be a stationarity test. Uh, this is going to essentially test that your mean is going to be zero and your variance is going to be constant. Um, to check for the zero mean, though, you're going to have to plot these. So, say plot uh, your errors. And your errors should look something like this, where this is time. Um, and they should look something like this. Right? Um, 
they could look slightly different as well. But that's going to be able to test for the mean of zero and the variance that is constant. Um, the no serial correlation piece here, um, this is most typically done um, with ACF charts. So we did ACF testing before. So in this case, these are going to be your lags. And most programs will plot out something where there's like a significant level on the top and a significant level on the bottom. And then you should see that all of your bars here for lag one, lag two, lag three, lag four, and all these lags out are going to be within the significant band, indicating that um, your lags are gonna be essentially correlated to zero. There's no correlation between them, so they're IID. Um, another test you can actually do for this though, which we're gonna talk about, um, you can test, so the Durbin-Watson, the DW test, is okay to test residuals for serial correlation as long as you do not have a moving average term, okay? The reason I'm gonna say this is that a Durbin-Watson test is like a t-test. So what it's gonna be doing is it'll have some regression, like we mentioned before, um, and it looks something like this. And it's going to be testing that uh, your error of t and your error of t minus one are not correlated. This is fine, you can use this for OLS models, you can use this for autoregressive models. You cannot use this for moving average models. This is my biggest pet peeve, and I consistently have issues with this in the industry of people doing this. Um, if you have a moving average model, okay, what you're gonna say is you have y of t is equal to alpha plus beta one x one, for example, plus you're gonna have, so let's call it beta two, but it's gonna be your errors of t minus one, and then you'll have your errors from the model. So this lagged error term is actually going to be your moving average component, and then this is your standard error and your standard model structure. Um, because you have the moving average term here, you have to test simultaneously the errors of t minus one and the errors of t together. So this would be equivalent um, to an F test. So as I mentioned, up here, right, we did a t-test for many of these other models because there's only one error. Uh, at a moving average, you can have two or more error terms, and to do this, you need to do some sort of f-testing. Um, the brush, I think it's how you spell this, the brush pagan testing uh, is the most common test to use for testing the residuals here. Um, use the brush pagan test, and you can test the moving average components. And anyways, you can check for serial correlation within the residuals. So let me explain why this is important and let's talk about it a little bit here. Um, the errors that you're going to have, right? We mentioned they should be random, they should be bouncing around. What this indicates is that we have pulled out all of the trends and patterns and impactful meaning components inside of the model. And so therefore, um, we're done modeling. We've reached the end of the road. There's no more signal to be pulled out of this. There's nothing else causing it. This is the best we're gonna do. So once you hit white noise, you can stop modeling. Um, common mistakes and issues I see though, so kind of a more fun aspect here. Um, you'll see errors that look somewhat like this. So let's see if I can do this here. Uh, you'll have errors that look like this, okay? And when you actually plot these, this is a big mistake here. A lot of people plot out their residuals. Um, so this is time, and these are going to be your errors, error of t. Um, they'll plot out some distribution here, and they'll say, okay, my errors, they're normal, and the mean here, so again, so this is to say, the mean is zero, so mean is zero, uh, they're normally distributed and we're A-OK, -okay. we can pass the model and we can go ahead and use it. Um, this should be pretty obvious though. In this model here, uh, you'll see that we have serial correlation. And when you actually plot out the model's predictions, so I've actually seen this in practice, um, you'll have some data that looks like the following. So let's say the data looks like this and it has some run, and it has some crash, and it has some run here, and it does like this, okay? And what ends up happening, we'll call this our actual y of t, and then 
you'll have the model where it actually over predicts in part of this and then for some reason something triggers and it under predicts for part of this and then it over predicts again for part of this and then it'll like under predict for the final piece here so for example in this piece we'll call this y hat of t so this is the prediction uh, you'll see in this piece here we're over predicting so in here right we're over predicting and then in this piece here okay so this was the over prediction part this piece from here to here in this time period this is going to be under predicting and then this is over and then this is going to be under right so I'll put an O and an U for under and so you'll end up with a plot that looks like this and people will be all excited and say hey it's awesome it works well it fits pretty good but here's the problem with this so I'm gonna give you a real world example let's say this is a trading book and this is what your model looks like and everyone thinks it's great wonderful um, let's say this is time this so let's say this is I don't know one year and this is two years here so in the first part we have over prediction for one year maybe it's a week I don't know there's some time frame here can you afford to be wrong consistently can you consistently be over predicting for like a week or a year or a month or whatever time period you're modeling here or are you going to go bankrupt so in trading atmospheres right you might essentially be losing money when you're over predicting so you'd be losing money for an entire year so you might go bankrupt before you even get to that point or you might have to close that position because no one's going to let you sit on that position while you're over predicting and then perhaps you make money when you're under predicting so you're making money in this piece you know here which is great but then again you're losing money for a long period here and then maybe you're making money a long period here these models are horrible you're missing something inside of the model um, again right you've met most of the conditions here but you right it has it looks like from this like the the mean is zero and the variance is fairly constant but the issue though is you have serial correlation and this is probably the biggest failure um, you cannot just do a normal residual test and think that covers everything and so to wrap this up here just going back to this um, just to emphasize right we want a mean zero for the errors we want the variance to be constant and no serial correlation because we assume iid again you can test your variance and mean using an adf test um, you can plot them out and look to see that your mean is going to be zero so when you do adf testing um, you can test for a variety of things there's three typical tests that come out there's uh, zero mean single mean and trend those are the three types of ADF testing we want to make sure we test for zero mean here um, again the stationarity test will test to make sure that your your variance here of your errors are going to be constant and that your residuals have no serial correlation in them and that they are IID um, and then just to wrap this up with a final warning because I know I get this all the time this is fine and dandy for testing the white noise but remember your inputs into the model so you're like x1 x2 x3 and all that and your dependent variable here so dependent and independent variables they have to be made stationary before you can run the regression they can be i1 or i2 for example so if you difference them in integration levels but they need to be made stationary before the regression is occurred right before you do this the residuals also have to be stationary so the ind the dependent the independent and the residuals all need to be stationary to have a stable dependable model so anyways thanks for watching don't forget to like share and subscribe and as always until next time <laughs>